I'm Ed Person from Ledred Farm in Moultonboro, New Hampshire. The farm consists of 100 acres, 22 are tillable, and we sell at a farm stand on a busy road. I use cover crops on all my fields. I plant them in the fall. The oats winter kill, and the winter rye is a green residue in the spring for those fields that I can't get on until later in the spring. We used to use our moldboard plows and a rototiller to do all, all our fields. Uh, very small residue. We used a Planet Junior planter, so we had to use uh, a system that had very little residue. Then as I changed planters, we were able to go to a reduced tillage system, which includes a chisel plow and a Perfecta field cultivator. This field that we're standing in here is winter killed oats. I prefer those over winter rye because it does uh, leave a dry residue in the spring. Um, there's enough residue to keep the weed pressure down, but with this amount of pressure, I'm still able to till the way I want to. We plant the oats at about 100 pounds per acre, and we broadcast them with a spin spreader, and then we use the perfecter to turn them under uh, at about two inches deep. The weed pressure that's left here is, is not a problem for us. These will incorporate very easily. If there's a lot more weeds, then we will mow it so that the length of the weeds doesn't tangle up in the chisel plow. This is our chisel plow. We converted using this about 20 years ago. Before that, we moldboard plowed and harrowed, and then we moldboard plowed and rototilled as the rotivator or rototiller became more uh, prevalent. This saves us a lot of time, and it reduces the fracturing of the soil or the beating up of the soil, I guess is what most people think when you rototill. This is a set of chisels that go in the ground about a foot. They'll make a furrow that tills the soil um, about 12 inches wide. The shanks are 12 inches apart, so the entire field gets tilled. After that happens, these smaller spring points will make it so that the big furrows are wiped out or smoothed over. And then the rake on back smooths it out so it's almost a perfect seed bed, but it's still a little too coarse to plant in. This is our perfecta that we use for our final tillage. After we've either used the chisel plow or the moldboard plow if there's a lot of trash that the chisel plow couldn't handle. This is the same principle as the chisel plow. We have a set of aggressive tines in the front that are spaced about four inches apart, and they will fracture the soil more than what the chisel plow did. Then we have another rake that will flatten the, the ridges that the chisels make, and will also aerate with these slanted tines. And then after they have passed, a roller is the next in line, and that packs and textures the soil so it will stay in place and we can plant into it. This brand is a Perfector by Unverfirth. There are many other brands out there that you could buy. We use a heavy-duty S-Tine and a 7.5 inch shovel. You could also get it in a lighter S-Tine and a narrower shovel. We use this particular setup because of our heavy soils and the rocks that we have to uh, bounce around. This is what we'd like to see after the perfecter is finished. A little bit of texture, some trash that's scattered in between, but my planter will certainly plant into this without any trouble. Over here, this is a little too trashy, but the planter will still work, but it may be hard to cultivate later. This is a Mattermack air planter. We went to this a few years ago from using our Planet Junior and our 71 Flexa planter because it allows us to plant in heavier trash. And using the chisel plow and the perfecter, which are really fast tools to prep the soil, this is the next step in doing that. The concept is it has fertilizer hoppers, seed hoppers, which are the same as any other planter. And then when we get down to the working unit, there's a shovel that clears the trash out of the way, a set of discs that opens the trench, and then another set of discs that presses the, the trench closed with the seed in it. So it really moves the trash out of the way and we can plant in really tough going. This is the plow that actually moves the trash and the rough ground out of the way for the discs so that they can set the seed at the proper depth. Half inch for carrots and beets, for example, two inches for the corn and beans. These are the drive wheels. Uh, they actually turn the gearing that allows the seed plate to turn and dispense the seed at the right locations. The vacuum holds the seed onto the plate until it's ready to be dropped. The openers are these discs that are hidden inside. Uh, they will cut the furrow. These wheels maintain the depth. These two wheels are the, are the covering mechanism. They're angled so that they put pressure with the spring to cover in the furrow. 
The benefit of these press wheels, rather than a shovel to cover the seed, is that they can work through the trash and they can also get the clods to just press in rather than having to move them around. Any planter that has the ability to move trash will work. I happened to buy a Mattermack because the price was right and it was a unit I had seen actually working.